In just seven hours, San Diegans will be ringing in the new year. How the city is now cracking down on people and businesses defying those health orders amid the pandemic. And local firefighters getting vaccinated for COVID-19 today. The important role they'll be playing as the vaccine rollout continues. Plus, in my mind, he represented an evil person and the world's better off without. The man called the most prolific serial killer in U.S. history has died. Hear from the former police officer who came face to face with the man he says had no remorse. ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. We begin with breaking news out of La Mesa where a pedestrian has died after being hit by a car. Sky 10 was overhead Harbison Avenue. This is south of El Cajon Boulevard. Police are asking drivers to avoid the area. They closed the street between Colony Road and Benita Place. It's not clear right now what led up to this tragic incident. We will bring you those details as we learn them. And more breaking news, this time on the Coronado Bridge, where there's a huge backup for those trying to get on the island right now. It's all because of that flipped vehicle in the westbound lanes. We are still working on getting information on the condition of whoever was inside that vehicle. And now to our top story. San Diego County shattering another record as it continues to deal with a surge in COVID-19. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Lindsay Pena has the night off. Here are the latest numbers. 62 new deaths were reported today. That is the highest daily number of deaths we've recorded since the start of the pandemic. And that brings the local death toll now to over 1,500. And more than 3,000 new cases were reported today, bringing that total to more than 155,000. Those rising numbers come just hours before San Diegans ring in 2021. And here in San Diego, an executive order signed by Mayor Todd Gloria means there will be stronger enforcement of the public health orders tonight. Our ABC tennis reporter Mimi Alcala explains the crackdown. We've seen over 1,400 of our neighbors die of COVID-19, surging uh, positivity rates and a new strain that was just detected in our community yesterday. It's New Year's Eve, and while many people will be celebrating safely at home with their immediate family, others are choosing to go out or gather. Here's a look at Little Italy's crowds Thursday afternoon. The gas lamp district was much quieter, although some in-person dining continued there as well. The county has already issued more than 100 cease and desist letters to businesses this month alone. And now San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria says repeat violators of the state and county public health orders will be held accountable with possible citations and fines. The vast majority of businesses are complying with the public health code and many of them have contacted my office saying, I'm following the rules. Why is the person next to me not? He signed this executive order Wednesday, resulting in the stricter enforcement efforts in the city. We have a mask order and it has been in place in our county since May. Uh, people know that outdoor dining had to cease uh, several weeks ago because we have such limited ICU capacity. People are aware that there is a curfew. A spokesperson from the San Diego Police Department sent us this statement saying the police department will conduct enforcement to ensure our communities are kept safe and to help slow the spread of COVID-19 in our communities. Those who willfully violate the county or state health order may be cited. The regional stay at home order was extended earlier this week as Southern California's ICU availability sits at 0% and it'll stay in place until there's at least 15% ICU availability. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Gloria's order also suspends some parking enforcement, including not enforcing parking meters or street sweeping tickets. The goal is to get more people to stay home. Those red, white and blue zones, they will continue to be enforced. This morning, first responders from the San Diego Fire Department received the COVID-19 vaccine. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell explains how some may be involved in distributing the vaccine. The county told us firefighters were getting vaccinated this morning because many of them will be involved in distributing the vaccine once more of it becomes available to the public. Paramedics with the fire department gave the vaccine to their co-workers. Firefighters say they've seen an impact on their workforce as cases surged in the county over the past few weeks. We, we are exposed to everything and we are the first responders in that door, sometimes not knowing what we're going to be exposed to. And we are certainly seeing the surge. The whole county has seen the surge, but our workforce is, is being significantly impacted right now. The medics have been trained as vaccinators. They will eventually help the county administer the vaccine to those in the top tier. 
The San Diego Fire Chief says the county will eventually vaccinate more than 1,000 doses over the next day. Members from all metro area departments are participating. The fire chief was also among those vaccinated. He says it was important for the top brass to get vaccinated with fire crews to show the confidence they have with the vaccine. If my effort down here in getting my vaccine has any influence on some of the folks that are maybe still undecided, then it was a benefit for me and, and that was the purpose I was down here for. Remember, this was just the first dose and in order for the vaccine to become effective, the second dose needs to be given. Reporting from home, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. The lawsuits against county and state restrictions are growing. Today, the San Diego Union Tribune is reporting 25 more gyms have filed suit, claiming the regulations violate their constitutional rights as well as that of their members. Right now, gyms can only operate outdoors, but in some cases, that's not enough. And not all gyms have the outdoor space or the resources to move outdoors. The latest suit joins several others from businesses across the county, including restaurants, churches, and strip clubs trying to ease restrictions. On that note, another grim prediction from the CDC. The agency says the U.S. could hit 424,000 COVID-19 deaths by January 23rd. And as ABC's Christine Sloan reports, vaccine distribution is going slower than expected. The U.S. seeing a record number of deaths for two consecutive days, 3,903 deaths reported on December 30th, according to the COVID tracking project. Hospitals in Los Angeles County overwhelmed. Every 10 minutes, the county's public health department tweeting about a life lost to the virus. We have reached the terrible milestone of exceeding 10,000 deaths from COVID-19 in LA County. In Anniston, Alabama, officials at the Regional Medical Center say they've run out of beds. When we did all these models and thought about planning how to take care of these patients, we were under the assumption that people would actually listen to us and say, hey, wear a mask, social distance, you gotta do it right because we eventually will run out of beds. The Trump administration had promised 20 million vaccinations by the end of the year, but so far only 14 million doses have been delivered and fewer than 3 million have been administered. What people should be uh, most excited about is that the curve is rapidly increasing in terms of number of people being vaccinated. Traffic backed up for miles in Hamilton County, Tennessee, after vaccine eligibility was expanded to those 75 and older. Senior citizens in Florida waiting in long lines as well. In Wisconsin, Aurora Medical Center fired an employee who admitted to intentionally ruining more than 500 doses of the vaccine by taking them out of special refrigeration. Both the FBI and FBI FDA are now investigating. Overseas, 40 million people in Great Britain are under harsh restrictions. All non-essential businesses closed. New Year's celebrations essentially canceled. But in the original epicenter of the pandemic, Wuhan, China, a city completely locked down at the beginning of 2020, life seemingly returning to normal as the year comes to an end. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. And President Trump is back in Washington tonight as his push for more stimulus money for struggling Americans has stalled. But as ABC's Faith Abube reports, the president is mainly focused on the final effort to fight the election results. President Trump cutting his Florida vacation a day short, returning to D.C. and to a Senate unmoved by his latest demands. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying there is no realistic path for a standalone bill granting $2,000 COVID relief checks. Both the president, Democrats, and a few Republicans support it. Borrowing from our grandkids to do socialism for rich people is a terrible way to get help to families who actually need it. Republicans worry the increased price tag would add to the deficit and go to households that won't need it. When corporations get a blanket tax break, that's fine by the Republican majority. When the average American gets a little help from their government, it's poorly targeted. Currently, no votes were scheduled in the Senate on the relief checks. The president, however, largely focused on overturning an election he lost, tweeting, January 6, see you in D.C. That day, GOP Senator Josh Hawley telling Fox News he plans to disrupt the Electoral College certification process in a last-ditch effort to challenge the presidential election results. 74 million Americans have concerns about election integrity. We're supposed to just sit down and shut up. Trump's own Justice Department has said there was no election fraud. Meantime, struggling Americans looking to Washington for help as round two of relief checks were issued. They're going to leave 
the capital with uh, their jobs, with their benefits, with their health care, while the average American has to suffer. About 787,000 Americans filed new unemployment claims in just the last week. Obviously, it goes without saying that times are tough right now for a lot of people. And another pressing concern for lawmakers is the Georgia runoff elections happening on Tuesday. Both President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden will be in Georgia on Monday to support their candidates. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. And you can keep up with any new developments surrounding the coronavirus by downloading our free mobile app. Just go to the App Store and search 10 News. An 18-year-old was arrested in connection to a homicide that happened last Saturday in El Cerrito. Police arrested Joseph Mellenbacher in the city of Murrieta yesterday. Police believe he shot 28-year-old Kenneth Confer in the head on El Cajon Boulevard after an argument. The victim was rushed to the hospital but did not survive. The water remains off limits at beaches in Coronado a day after a shark got too close to a swimmer. And lifeguards say a juvenile white shark nipped at the swimmer's fin yesterday afternoon, leaving teeth marks. The swimmer was able to get away and wasn't hurt. Police are still enjoying the sandy shoreline. People are, but are, they are not in the water. And water activities are expected to reopen tomorrow if it's deemed safe. <laughs> Well, dinosaurs are once again taking over the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Jurassic Quest has become an annual winter tradition in San Diego at a time when so many other traditions are getting canceled. Our ABC 10 News reporter Jeff Lasky shows the changes made to keep the dinosaurs on tour. Jurassic Quest is back in Del Mar. Life-size dinosaurs that move and roar and we have over 70. Each year's visit is the closest San Diego gets to Jurassic Park, minus the, you know, eating people. You can bring your kids to enjoy some fun dinosaurs. <laughs> you can hear them roaring in the back. Normally, those roars would be reverberating through a large indoor walking exhibit. This year, the pandemic made that impossible, but Jurassic Quest didn't want to close down. We definitely wanted to make sure that People had something to do because we were all kind of quarantined in our houses and also we wanted to work and get out there. They went back to the drawing board. We really had to switch gears and think about a way that we could still bring the joy of dinosaurs to the public, but in a safe way. The solution moved the dinosaurs outside and the people inside, inside their cars. In our drive through we've added our audio tour. So as you drive, we have an audio tour that explains the dinosaurs, explains their characteristics in a fun way. When you get there, they suggest keeping an eye out for the baby dinosaurs, like little Tyson the T-Rex. You can see these dinosaurs when you come in, they'll greet you, say hello, um, but you know, safely distance, obviously. It's how the Jurassic era meets the COVID era. Jeff Lasky, ABC 10 News. And Jeff tells us Jurassic Quest opens tomorrow, runs through the 10th at Del Mar. It costs $49 per car.